Is it possible that the computer you're watching this video on is actually conscious? That it has a conscious experience of its own, just like you right now as you're watching this? This might sound ridiculous, but it's actually hard to argue against once you accept some basic assumptions. First, ask yourself this. What makes you conscious? Your brain consists mostly of hydrogen, carbon and oxygen atoms. It just so happens that these are three out of the top four most commonly found elements in the universe. And yet, most matter we see is just that, cold, lifeless matter. So what is so special about your random collection of atoms? Maybe it's the unique configuration of those atoms that have allowed for consciousness to emerge. Perhaps it's the complexity of your brain that makes it happen. If so, at what point in our evolutionary development did it come into existence? It's safe to assume that other mammals also have conscious experience. It's intuitively obvious to us that when a dog wags his tail, he's having an internal experience of joy in that moment. Genetically, dogs are quite similar to us, and so is their brain structure. As we move further back on the evolutionary timeline to creatures that have been around for much longer, such as birds and reptiles, we encounter less and less complex brains. Now we can say with relative certainty that an ant is not having an internal monologue as it's going about its usual ant business. We can deduce from their behavior and uh, the simplicity of their nervous system that their experience of the world is very different from that of ours. But to assume that an organism doesn't have consciousness simply because it can't demonstrate outward signs that are intelligible to us is in the end just an assumption. It's just easier for us to imagine this property about creatures that are more closely related to us. Go back far enough in time and we get organisms that are so simple that it's for an expert to delineate between animal and plant, or between living organisms and non-living chemical processes. Whether or not a virus can be called alive is fundamentally a matter of definition. The point is that it's impossible to say what level of complexity is required for consciousness to emerge. And why should it suddenly pop into existence at all? When there are organisms that are functioning perfectly without being conscious, what is it that suddenly makes its offspring conscious? Could it be that it has actually nothing to do with brain processing and is actually just a fundamental property of matter? This idea is what is referred to as panpsychism. The term comes from the Greek pan, which means all or everything, and psyche, which means soul or mind. It's quite an eerie feeling when you entertain the thought that the chair you're sitting on might be aware of you. That every tree, every rock and every grain of sand is actually teeming with consciousness. Panpsychism cannot be disproven, at least not with current scientific methods. Some speculate that what is actually causing consciousness is the processing of information. If that is true, this implies that biological life isn't the only place where it can appear. Your laptop is made up of transistors instead of neurons. But if the processing of information is what counts, then it shouldn't matter if it takes place on a CPU made of silicon or a human brain. Your iPhone may experience a death and a rebirth every time you push that power button. We can take this thought one step further and apply it to informational systems that are bigger than ourselves. Systems that we ourselves are a part of and stand in relation to, in the same way a single neuron might be in relation to the rest of the brain. Such a system might be the internet. The average brain has 86 billion neurons, while the internet is an entity which connects approximately 22 billion devices. It's estimated that by 2030, that number will have grown to 125 billion. Sending out tweets and pictures into this vast network of mobile phones, computers, and other gadgets can be considered analogous to a single neuron within a brain that is transmitting electrical signals. You might be functioning as a tiny node in a network that is giving rise 
to a mind far greater and more powerful than that of any single human in history. It's certainly interesting to think about. Mm -hmm.